Local exhaust, or spot ventilation, is a key tool in removing contaminants where they're generated, before they can spread to the rest of the house. Let's look a little closer at the requirements for these fans. ASHRAE 62.2 says that a local exhaust system must be installed in each kitchen and bath. Remember that this was written for new construction. We'll come back to the requirements for existing homes later. In kitchens, the solution is typically a range hood or a fan integrated into an over-range microwave. In bathrooms, it's usually a ceiling-mounted fan. The standard gives two options for operation of these systems, demand-controlled or continuous. We rarely see continuous systems, except in multifamily buildings, where a rooftop fan might run continuously to serve multiple apartments below it. One case where a continuous system might be used in a single family house is if a balanced system like a heat recovery ventilator is installed for fresh air. These are slowly becoming more common and I'll come back to them later in the course. Demand controlled systems are much more common. They're often also called intermittent systems. They can be activated by a variety of means. It could be a dedicated on off switch like a wall switch for a bath fan or an integrated switch for a range hood or it could be a combined switch where turning on the light also turns on the fan. Other acceptable options include occupancy sensors, timers, and humidity sensors for bath fans. ASHRAE Standard 62.2 2013 includes required minimum flow rates for different fan types. Logically, the required rates are higher for intermittent systems than they are for systems that run continuously. For kitchens, intermittent systems like range hoods must provide at least 100 cubic feet per minute of exhaust. Continuous systems must provide at least five air changes per hour in the kitchen. So the bigger the kitchen, the higher the flow rate must be. This has changed a bit in the 2016 version to account for recent trends towards kitchens that are open to the rest of the house. I won't go into the details to avoid confusion, but if you're working under that standard, you may need to do some additional research. For bathrooms, intermittent fans must provide at least 50 CFM. Continuous systems must provide at least 20. The standard also includes another important requirement. It specifies that these must be the actual measured system flow rates, not the manufacturer ratings for the fans. Delivered flow rates are often well below the rated flows. ASHRAE 62.2 requires measurement of exhaust system flow rates for numerous purposes. In new construction, testing is necessary to ensure that the installed systems meet the required rates. In existing buildings, the flow rates of the existing fans are used to determine how much mechanical ventilation is needed. There are three tools commonly used for these measurements. A flow hood, an exhaust fan flow meter, and an anemometer. Let's take a look at each of these. Flow hoods, which are also called bolometers, are commonly used for commissioning HVAC systems in commercial buildings. They're accurate and very simple to use. You just tell the device which direction the air is flowing, place the hood over the inlet or outlet, and read the flow from the display. The biggest downside to these devices is the price. They start at about $1,500. Of course, if you purchase one, you can also use it to measure heating and cooling system flow rates to help diagnose comfort and performance problems. If you already own a duct blaster for measuring duct leakage, the Energy Conservatory sells a kit that converts it into a flow hood. However, at $1,100, it's almost as expensive as a dedicated flow hood, but it's heavier and takes more time to set up. The Energy Conservatory also offers a lower cost alternative. They call it an exhaust fan flow meter. It's basically a plastic box with a gasket and an adjustable opening. It works in conjunction with a digital pressure and flow gauge like the DG700 that's shown in the photo. If you already own the gauge because it came with a blower door or duct blaster, you can buy the plastic box for $150. It's lightweight and easy to use, but it's only accurate for measuring exhaust air flowing into it. It won't give you a good reading for air coming out of a register. The last option is called an anemometer, which has a propeller that measures the velocity of the air going into or out of a register or grill, usually in feet per second. Now that's not enough on its own to evaluate the system, but if you multiply it by the area of the opening, you can get the volumetric flow rate. Of course, you have to do some unit conversions to get the measurements that are in inches and seconds to a final result that's in cubic feet per minute. 
You also need to remember that the area of the opening is the net free area between the louvers, not the total area of the register. Basic anemometers can be purchased for under $100. An anemometer made by Testo eliminates the mathematical complications by offering it with a hood attachment that makes the inlet area consistent, so it can calculate the CFM for you. It's compact and easy to use, and the whole setup costs about $750. Range hood flow rates can be particularly challenging to measure because of the awkward shape of the opening and the sometimes limited distance between the hood and the cooktop. You can see how challenging it is on the big range hood in my old row house. One potential solution is to carry around a thin plywood template that will cover the underside of a typical 30-inch range hood. That should work on at least three-quarters of the hoods you'll encounter. In other cases, it may be necessary to go outside and measure where the air exits the building, assuming it's not on the roof. That's how I did it here on my row house. But remember, you can't do this with the exhaust fan flow meter box. It's not accurate with air flowing in that direction. As you can see, the flow hood really gives you the most flexibility if you can afford the initial cost.